the most memorable moment of Zinedine Zidane's career was the last thing he ever did on a football pitch. In the 2006 World Cup final, Zidane headbutted Italy defender Marco Materazzi. A magnificent career ended with a red card on the biggest of all stages. But for many years before that incident, the attacking midfielder was one of the best footballers in the world. To train with Zidane was a dream, David Beckham once said. For me, he's the greatest player of all time. So how good was Zinedine Zidane actually? Early life in 1972, Zidane was born in Marseille. His parents had emigrated to southern France from Algeria, and Zinedine was the youngest of their five children. His dad used to work as a watchman at a department store. He'd leave for work in the evening and not return until the morning. Zidane said his father's work ethic had a big influence on him. As soon as he could walk, Zidane loved to play football. He supported Marseille and grew up idolizing Jean-Pierre Papin and Enzo Francescoli. His love for Francescoli was so strong that he named his son Enzo after him. At the age of 14, Zidane was scouted by Cannes. His feet spoke with the ball, said the scout who discovered him. He was quickly integrated into the club's academy and worked his way up through the youth ranks. But one major problem threatened to derail Zidane's burgeoning career. You see, there was a lot of excitement about Zidane when he made his debut. Anyone who watched him play was amazed by his natural ability. But Zidane was still a raw talent and his temperament got him into big, big trouble. He used to react back badly when opponents fouled him. He often got sent off. He even attacked spectators who insulted his family. In Zidane's first full season on the first team, Cannes finished fourth in League One. That was a magnificent achievement for a club of their size. Everyone was talking about the young attacking midfielder who seemed to have the ball on a string. Zidane continued to earn rave reviews over the next few years. At one point in the 1990s, he came close to joining a Premier League club. And no, it's not the one you'd expect. Before that, in 1992, he moved to Bordeaux. It was a step up for Zizou, but he quickly showed he could handle it. Zidane spent four seasons with the club. In 95 to 96, he helped Bordeaux reach the UEFA Cup final, which they narrowly lost to Bayern Munich. At the start of that season, there was strong interest from an English side. Blackburn manager Kenny Dalglish was a big fan of Zidane's. He told his chairman Jack Walker that he wanted to sign him. Walker's reply was legendary. Why do you want to sign Zidane when we have Tim Sherwood? career achievements. In 1996, Zidane joined Juventus. they just won the Champions League under Marcello Lippi, and the manager felt Zidane could take his team to another level. It was an inspired piece of business. Zidane hit the ground running in Italy. In his first season, he was named Serie A Foreign Footballer of the Year, as Juventus won the title. He instantly headed off with Alessandro Del Piero, who described him as an extraordinary talent with a unique ability. At the end of his second season with Juve, Zidane won the World Cup with France. He scored twice in the final against Brazil as the host nation won 3-0. He was voted into FIFA's all-star team of the tournament and won the Ballon d'Or at the end of the year. At Euro 2000, Zidane was even better. The number 10 was majestic in the knockout stage in particular. He turned in mesmerizing performances against Spain, Portugal and Italy. The bigger the match, the better Zidane was. France won that tournament too. Zidane was named player of the tournament and there was no debate. After one one more season at Juventus, Zizou joined Real Madrid for a world record fee of 150 billion. Uh, that's Italian lira, not euros, before you fall off your chair. In his debut season of 2001-2, Zidane starred as Madrid reached the Champions League final. Against Bayer Leverkusen, he scored a stunning left foot volley to give Madrid the trophy. That triumph was supposed to be the start of something special for Madrid, but there was one big issue that no one had considered. By the time Zizou arrived in Spain. Florentino Perez's Galactico project was in full swing. Madrid's squad would soon contain Zidane, Luis Figo, Roberto Carlos, Raul, Ronaldo and David Beckham. It was an incredible collection of superstars. Football isn't played on paper though. PSG fans know that having world-class players doesn't guarantee success. The Galactico side was top-heavy and overloaded with attacking stars. There was a lack of balance in the team. There can be no doubting Zidane's accomplishments on an individual level. He was voted FIFA World Player of the Year three times during his career, but Madrid only won one La Liga title in Zidane's five years at the Bernabeu. Between 2004 and 2006, they didn't even reach the Champions League semis. Style of play 
Now, you might be surprised to learn that Zidane isn't universally popular. His detractors have one big criticism of him, and we'll come to that shortly. Despite being over six feet tall, the attacking midfielder used to glide across the pitch. He was a superb dribbler and possessed fantastic vision and passing ability. Zidane was the creative hub of all of his teams, the man who pulled the strings and made things tick. His critics say that Zidane could have been more efficient. By the standards of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, he didn't score many any goals. In fact, Zidane never got more than 10 in a league season for Juventus or Real. But his biggest contribution to the game was elevating football into art. Just listen to what Alfredo Di Stefano, a Real Madrid legend and one of the best players of all time, had to say about him. He dominates the ball. He's a walking spectacle and he plays as if he had silk gloves on each foot. He makes it worthwhile going to the stadium. He's one of the best I've ever seen. An overlooked aspect of Zidane's game was his mental strength and character. The Frenchman was a master at rising to the occasion, and he always brought his A-game to the biggest matches. His critics might focus on his inconsistency throughout some seasons, but Zidane performed when it really mattered. Whether it was scoring in big finals for club and country, dominating the knockout stages of Euro 2000 and the 2006 World Cup, or leading Bordeaux, Juventus and Madrid to European finals, you could always rely on Zidane to deliver when the heat was on. When Zidane stepped onto the pitch, the ten other guys just suddenly got better, said Zlatan Ibrahimovic. The fact that Zlatan was praising someone other than himself just shows how special Zizou was. Where does he rank? So, where does Zidane rank in the pantheon of all-time great attacking midfielders? Uh, the simple answer to that is right near the very top. Zidane is a player who has to be seen to be fully appreciated. He averaged just 10 goals a season in all competitions during his time at Real Madrid and 0.18 per game throughout his club career. Compare that to the 18 per season Kaká managed during his peak years at Milan or Zico's record of 0.68 goals per club game between debut and retirement. Michel Platini, the man Zidane Zidane is most often compared to was also much more effective at putting the ball in the back of the net. The data for assists throughout football history is unreliable, but in that area Zidane was definitely more productive. At Madrid he set up 51 goals in 155 games. In his 80 appearances in the Champions League he provided 32 assists. Those are terrific numbers and show that Zidane was a world-class playmaker. Yet even those figures don't do justice to Zidane's quality. The way he carried the ball past opponents as if they weren't there was truly special. He had a rare ability to control games even when he wasn't scoring or assisting. Just look at Euro 2000. If you sit down and watch Zidane's performances, you'll see how great he was. But the underlying stats aren't so impressive. Two goals and one assist. Or look at his legendary display against Brazil at the 2006 World Cup. Thierry Henry scored the only goal. But the 34-year-old Zidane completely dominated a match against the likes of Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, and Kaká. He's not quite up there with the likes of Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Pelé and Diego Maradona in the GOAT debate, but Zidane belongs in the rung below those superhuman stars. Along with Platini, he's the best French footballer in history.